Thursday. Shout out to Paul of Hokuto Force for that C64 intro, by the way, but yeah. Just looking at a parking lot here because it's freshly paved and that pleases me. Nice day for a Goodwill run. Got the Lucky Rock over there looking lucky as always, and I'll leave it be this time. And immediately inside in the media section, there are a small handful of games here for yeah, various systems. Got a couple of original Xbox games. Nothing I need, but you know, there it is. Same goes for Fable, the Lost Chapters here. Already have it, don't need it, but, uh, you know, I'm seeing these kinds of things in Goodwills less and less these days. Same goes for this, just DOS and Windows 3 applications like Print Shop Deluxe Ensemble here, or the CD Ensemble. Again, already own it, but uh, it's nice to see D Ensemble. <laughs> yeah. Over in the glass case, there's a Frame Meister, uh, Frame Master? Uh, yeah, it's one of these things. I used to use these while making custom picture frames. It's a point driver, you can stick in the back and mount things, and yeah, anyway. More console games and some handheld stuff, as usual, down below. Nothing standing out to me, anyway. Now, this right here stood out, though. We got an Edison Phonograph Cylinder Record. 25 bucks is a bit much. I got a couple of these that are older, even, for like five bucks. Ooh, and it's one of these little guys, one of those mini tape recorders by Norelco. I think I've actually picked up one of these in a previous thrifts. I just like the design of these little 60s tape recorders. Ooh, now this is more like it. Up above here on top of the case, we've got a Atari 2600 uh, Light Sixer. The VCS itself, a Telegames Center, just a plastic base, but you know, manuals and games and controllers and... I mean, you know, not a bad little set. Again, nothing I don't have, and uh, we're charging $150. After they cut that price in half, I think it sold like a week later. Uh, this was kind of neat. I saw stacks and stacks of these magazine ads from the 1920s and 30s. All in protective plastic with cardboard backing. And yeah, it's mostly from the Ladies Home Journal. A lot of it actually being ads for soap, cleaning products, an amusing collection. Yeah, this kind of thing always catches my eye. We have a traffic signal here. Mostly a hard plastic construction, but yeah, I'd love to grab one of these sometime and like convert it to a thing. <laughs> and then look at this thing. Oh man, the big old skin here. Just, yeah, I mean, it, somebody just dropped off a skin. How very John Marston. Ah, here we go. I've always liked the look of these things. This is a Yamaha Clavinova. This is a CLP 250. Yeah, I've just always admired the clean lines and the clean sound, really, of these. I remember seeing them in the late 80s, well, really early 90s. In music stores, just a digital piano, but it's kind of cool. And then around the corner, look at this, they have like a, like an entire dedicated wood section. I, I guess they didn't know where else to put this, so it's all just like wood things. Feels like it was specifically made for me somehow, even though I, uh, I mean, you know, it's not, but I appreciate the effort. Ah oh man, check out this load of rubber stamps. It's a rather random assortment, it seems, just stuck together in little bags, $20 each, which, uh, considering the price that some of these can actually be, normally, that's not the worst deal for some of these, if you want these designs anyway. Alright, getting over to the electronics wall, and over here, this caught my eye because of course it does. It is an IBM wheel writer. This is a much later one than I normally see. This is a five. I most often see, like, the twos and threes. And it looks like we got some dark room related equipment here. This is a compensating enlarging timer. All sorts of useful looking settings for developing film photographs and all that. Don't know if it actually has all it needs with it, but yeah, it's a thing. Down below there was an intriguing stack of AV stuff, like that Kmart stereo 8-track player right there, but I was mostly attracted to this Data Dynamics Pulse Generator. 5113 is the model. I mean, just look at this thing. You don't normally see this type of equipment. I mean, I've seen some neat things, but not one quite like this before. Ah, I like it. Oh man, look at this little tiny mouse. It's so small. Almost to the point of it being useless. Man, I used to see these like bundled all the time with laptop carrying cases and such. Oh hey, now what is this? Ah, just a little uh, portable radio here from Sony, but dang it, I love this design. Like, look at this. It's just almost has a Dieter Rams esque drawn design. I don't know. It's just a clean look. And well, okay, this is an increasingly rare sight of Goodwills these days. We got an NES over here. Just the main unit itself, but you know, it's got the cables and two controllers, 15 bucks. It's yellowed, but so it goes. 15 is not bad, all things considered, if it's functional, but who knows? I'm sure somebody will buy this really quickly. As for me, though, I'm not going to buy that, but I'm going to buy this really quickly. Check this out. We've got a VIC 1525 graphic printer here by Commodore. 
The box is a little nasty in parts, but $20 and it is brand new old stock inside there. I mean, everything is still taped up, sealed and everything. The manual, the cables, the printer itself. I mean, just it's all there. Yeah, I'm totally grabbing this. Ah, man, it's such a nice day out at this point. So let's keep on going. We've got another Goodwill here. And this is the one that remodeled recently ish with the wood laminate flooring and the brown and black shelves. And yeah, it's just a classy look here now. Anyway, checking out the back wall of goodies over here, and there wasn't much last time I visited, but this time I saw this Zenith tube radio. It's a Bakelite kind of maroon colored thing for $5. Haven't yet dove into mid-century radio collecting, but I don't know, man, they're cool. As opposed to these, which I'm sorry to say will never be cool. <laughs> these terrible VR viewers. It's just one of those glorified Google Cardboard things that you find it like daggone gas stations sell these now everywhere. They're littering Goodwills. Down below that though, this caught my eye because uh, you know, keyboard and it's by Keytronic and they have some pretty awesome stuff at times. This one on the other hand was a later, much crappier plasticky model. I liked the black on black and everything, but yeah, it's, it's later. It's got the windows keys and all that kind of stuff and it's not mechanical, so nobody cares. You know, here's something that always gets my attention at thrift stores. Whiteboards and things like that that still have somebody's notation on there. This one in particular having writing that's almost three years old at this point. Like, it just, I don't know, it amuses me that someone just decided to give this to Goodwill and not erase it. Like, here, look at this chalkboard. Like, you know what? It's just time to get rid of this thing. It, it, it may have something written on there. But we're just going to give it to Goodwill. And then Goodwill's not going to erase it either. <laughs> it's just, rah, shake weight. On the topic of goodwill and things that occur, like, this is another one of those. Every so often you see just a large collection of somebody's book. This one being, You Made My Day, Creating Coworker Recognition and Relationships. Like, somebody went through the trouble of getting these printed and, you know, they had a whole bunch of them, but I guess they just they couldn't sell them or who knows. It's amusing and sad at the same time. And thrift stores, man, what can I say? But right around the corner from that, it looks like they have fleshed out their media section a little bit more since last time. It's also a somewhat nicely organized selection of records on the other side of that shelf. This will be a mess in about a week. And over in the puzzles and board games, not much catching my eye, although I did see one thing here that stood out because Sierra, but yeah, it's not really that kind of Sierra. It's not a game, it's just master cook. They had so many of these cooking programs. They're just like applications for Windows 3.1 and 95 to just give you recipes and stuff on CD. Well, anyway, that's a thing. Moving on to another Goodwill, because why not? It's around here. Checking out the glass case here, and ooh, tiny piano. And then this caught my eye because Planet Fitness New Year's Eve Times Square. I, I guess there's New Year's Eve parties at Planet Fitness. I don't know, man. I just, I wanted to crush it, so I did. Okay, what do we got here? Some uh, stiletto tape dispensers? <laughs> There's not one, but two, which just, I don't even know. Check out the books. We got some books. Oh, hey, what is this? Warcraft? War of the Ancients? We got Starcraft? Mm, somebody was into some Blizzard things, and then they weren't. Over in the junk section, and let's see, what is this? Believe! This is a CD-ROM something. It's a comprehensive Christian 5 CD-ROM reference set with... <laughs> Actually, I think I have most of these individually, but anyway... Though in the bottom right there, I got my attention. The screen savior. <laughs> oh, that is some top-notch religious punnery right there. But anyway, let's see. Over in the board games and toys and stuff. And uh, this is an electronic doohickey. What is this? Buckmaster's Elk Hunting? Yeah. Always been a bit intrigued by these glorified game and watch type things. It's like a tiger electronic game, but in a ridiculous form factor. Anyway, whatever. Behind there on the bottom shelf was... This blue deal right here, and my knee in frame. Anyway, yeah, look at this, music time, The Performer. It's a very cheaply built record player, but the thing is it also has a tape player down in the front here, and it's like a front-loading thing, like you'd see in a car. Can't say I've seen that combination before, so it stood out because reasons. He stood out as well because brown. I've seen this particular model of GE clock radio before a couple times now thrifting, but yeah, check this out. Desktop lightbox by Logan. So this was amusing. It's a lightbox, so you can look at slides, for instance, or light up your artwork or drafting or whatever you're happening to, you know. If you're doing stuff and you need it lit from behind, that's pretty cool. It also gives a nice glow to this clock radio. 
And all right, we got one more Goodwill here, and well, they seem to be doing a bit of work next door. This plot has been for sale for a long time, just right next to this Goodwill, but here recently they've been digging it up and putting in a foundation, so who knows what's gonna be here? It's like right up against this store, so kind of makes me wonder what parking is gonna be like. Anyway, it's approaching Halloween as I recorded this, so uh, check this guy out. That's a little un unnerving, air-blown inflatable giant clown. I had several bins full of DVDs and other media up front here. A whole bunch of Wii games, a bunch of PlayStation 2 stuff. Got some PC, like Sims collections. Nothing too special, but more in one spot than usual. And then same goes for all of these bins up near the registers. Just chock full of baseball cards. Got 10 totes for $1,000. And I guess somebody took them up on that because they were gone in like a couple of days. Totes worth it for somebody. In the glass case itself, this grabbed my attention because of these characters on here in the back of this little record player. A DJ Happy Tunes. Yeah, something about the design and color scheme reminded me of like the Fallout Vault Boy. Pretty ratty looking thing, all things considered. On over to the opposite side of the store and well, look at this beast. We got an Encore Phantom Fingers. Or I suppose it's by Baldwin, but anyway, a big old organ thing missing like all of the buttons and knobs and things, if they could be taken off, they were taken off, so I'm wondering what happened there, but uh, yeah, they were selling it as a piano for $50. And just down from that, there were a pair of speakers here that honestly seemed somewhat overpriced. Maybe that's just me, $100 for these Welton USA PS100s. I just kinda like the look of them, that's all. Same goes for these blenders, especially this one right here. We got a wearing solid state Futura series, dude. I'd love to get one of these sometime because I don't know why. I just, look at the, how ugly it is and it's amazing looking at the same time. The Osterizer is kind of cool too, but dang it, that wearing. Now right around the corner here, we got a bunch of VHS. In fact, a whole collection of Babylon 5 as well as one or two PC games. We got Call of Duty 2, absolute classic. Still maybe my favorite in the series, especially on PC. But yeah, I still own my copy from back in the day. Uh, over here on this other shelf, we got some more media, more console games mostly, a bunch of Xbox 360 stuff, which surprisingly still had all the discs in the cases. Rather often, they are missing, especially games like Minecraft. All right, electronic stuff, and check this thing out. It's a General Electric record player radio eight track thing, like, uh, you know, it's just that combo of like flipping toggle switches and knobs and silver and black and the red and the blue, and yeah, dude, it looks cool. I wish more modern electronics took on like a crazy looking space age type design like this. However, impractical the final result. Up above here was something a little bit different. We've got a Crestron audio video control processor with all sorts of serial connections and things for infrared and, you know, AV, as it said. Yeah, just not a common sight. Alrighty, what do we have here? I see a case with a red button. Assuming it's a typewriter, and yes, it is a Rover 5000 Super Deluxe. Cream and black and white and red and silver, dude. That's just a timeless combo. Next shelf down next to that classic Kodak carousel in a package, we got a CD player from Yorks that reminded me a little bit of the 3DO FZ1 just in terms of the aesthetic. I don't know, it's got that look that makes it appear somewhat quality, but yet cheap at the same time. It's just a thing, man, that makes me happy to look at. All right, what do we have here? This is a wood grain cylinder. <laughs> it looks like a pencil sharpener, but there's a... Uh, and there's like no sharpening mechanism. Uh, on closer inspection, that's exactly what it was. Got that Radio Shack catalog number on the bottom, but anyway, yeah, just, just wood grain cylinder now without the sharpener. Okay, puzzles and board games, and I see some system requirements. What do we have here? It is Chess Master 6000, a European release, <laughs> oddly enough. Not one that I am needing, but yeah, again, just the fact that it's slightly out of the ordinary, I had to take a look. Hmm, what do we have here? Got another piece of big box software. This is Daytimer Organizer 2000. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's just an organizer. Most of them you got for free or bundled with other office programs or something. So it amuses me that this was sold as a standalone thing. And yet somebody got it, never opened it. I guess just took the UPC for a rebate or something. 
And then finally, over in the books section, this grabbed my attention immediately because this is the exact type of thing that I used to love looking at as a kid in the library or like Walden books or Borders or Barnes Noble, whatever. It's the world's fastest cars circa 1989. <laughs> Just fantastic photography and little write-ups on things. This is what sold me though, the Dodge slash Shelby Viper RT10. I love that prototype, and it's just really cool to see some of these pictures, many of which I'd never seen before. And that is it for LGR Thrifts episode 43. I did not end up with much here, really, it's just that book and the Commodore printer, and that's it. I mean, it's just been kind of a simultaneously busy and slow summer in regards to thrifting. Busy because I've been doing all sorts of other things and slow because I didn't find much stuff when I did get a chance to go thrifting. So anyway, whatever, it's just, it's not much, but it's definitely down my alley to an extreme. However, you folks, I've been continually sending in your finds over the summer, uh, you know, I need to start traveling a little bit more if I want to make more of these thrifting episodes because it's just drying up around me, I guess, and that's how it is. Maybe I'll get a chance to do more of that next year. You know, obviously, you can see that a lot of people are finding a lot of cool things. You just got to go and look. And well, that is it for LGR Thrifts this episode, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.